Hello and welcome to this week's presentation of News in Depth. My name is Penifa Sukainda. Now, West Africa's first ever Ebola outbreak in humans is now the most deadly and geographically widespread outbreak on record and is threatening to spread. The disease first broke out in Guinea in March 2014, then other cases were reported in Liberia, Sierra Leone, Nigeria, Senegal and now neighboring Democratic Republic of Congo. The disease has killed over 2,400 people. Countries are doing all they can to prevent the spread of the deadly viral disease. On today's edition of News in Depth, Efim Pande looks at Zambia's preparedness in an event that Ebola is detected. months ago things were very different people crossed in and out of countries and flew across the globe freely but that was before Ebola and when it came the world panicked some countries barricaded themselves while others called for a lockdown blocking out visitors from Ebola inflicted nations Others have been more accommodating, like Zambia, which has introduced screening for the disease at its entry points. Ebola is not a pleasant disease. Few afflictions can be more deadly than Ebola. Ebola is not only feared for its deadliness, but also its incurable strain. It has seen more people killed than healed. Ever since its return this year, the viral disease which broke out in West Africa has had an almost 80% fatality rate. The Congo and the Democratic Republic of Congo in particular seems to have many surprises when it comes to strange, outlandish and bizarre ailments. Was it not about the Congo that scientists speculated the origins of the AIDS virus? And is it not again the Congo that comes up strongly when Ebola is mentioned? Ebola is said to have first been discovered in the Democratic Republic of Congo in 1976. What is Ebola? Ebola is a viral, you know, zoonosis. It's a viral infection that causes disease in humans and animals. Now, in animals, these are animals like uh, chimpanzees, apes, gorillas, you know, monkeys, baboons, as well as the other small antelopes, like uh, dikers. Now, um, the reservoir host for the causative agent of Ebola, by the way, the, reservoir, uh, the, the causative agent is actually the Ebola virus. The reservoir host in nature is the bat, the, migrate, the fruit bat, fruit-eating bat. And how is this disease transmitted? If a human being comes into contact with these animals, that is generally how an outbreak starts. They get infected by one of these uh, animals, either if they are hunting and they come into contact with the blood or body fluids of that animal, if they eat uh, the meat from that animal, they can get infected. But once a human being has been infected, they can then pass on the disease to another human being by uh, that human being coming into contact with their infected uh, body fluids. Uh, here we are talking about uh, vomitus, diarrhea, uh, blood itself. Uh, if somebody comes into contact with that, they can become infected. With the recent outbreak, authorities are doing all they can to prevent the disease from spreading into Zambia. This is Kasumbalesa, one of the busiest border posts in the country. Traffic here is heavy. About 600 lorries pass through this border every day. And that is besides hundreds of travelers. All these have to be screened. 
ambulances are on standby in an event that Ebola is detected. Recently, Director of Disease Surveillance Control and Research from the Ministry of Health, Elizabeth Chizema, toured four entry points on the copper belt. We've got this slip where we are getting the basic information, their nationality, the date we are screening them, the time we have screened them, and the temperature it's reading. Then after, when we are satisfied that the temperature is above, is within the normal, then we certify them as having been certified to make entry, then they go to the So some of the basic information that we are asking from them is their permanent residence, their previous place of travel, okay, where are they going, what mode of transport are they using, then name, my name, the person who is screening them, and their contact number, their contact number. Yes. So then after that, the after coming from no, uh, we don't have. Dr. Chizema visited Kasumbalesa, Mokambo, Sakanya borders, and Simon Mwansakapopo International Airport. What we've done as a Ministry of Health with all the partners, that is government as well as the other partners, we've actually come up with a plan for Ebola preparedness. So this is the immediate measures so that we ensure that we do not have Ebola outbreak in our country. So this includes the coordination, the materials for information and education to the uh, sensitization for the community as well as the preparedness. In case we have the first initial cases, then we should be able to manage those cases. In addition, we'd like also to look at the long term, because we don't just look at Ebola, there are other infectious diseases. So we are saying, can we be prepared, be it cholera, be it any other infectious disease? So then we are also coming up now with the long term, where we are also looking at the structures for isolation where we will construct uh, isolation centers in all the provinces initially. If funding uh, is available in future, we may also look at uh, the districts. Across the borders, the Democratic Republic of Congo is also not sitting idle. Uh, fish, the fish. Oh. 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 I wanted some pictures to take. Même Okay, to But securing a country's entry point is not an easy undertaking. Borders are never fenced, and this in itself makes them porous. Though many are screened, there are still those who manage to sneak into Zambia or the Congo by footpath. These are some of them. They freely walk in and out of the country. This is a setback in terms of fighting Ebola. Isolation facilities have already been identified across the country. This is one of the facilities on the copper belt where patients will be kept in an event that the disease is detected. We have got uh, you know, surveillance activities going on at uh, Chirundu border post where we've got a portable thermal scanner there and health workers are screening everyone who's passing through that border. We've also got activities going on in Luangwa. You know, as you are aware, these are our key uh, border uh, towns as uh, Lusaka province. We've gone further for the airport, actually, I think, to set up a site. In case we find anyone 
okay, would be able to isolate them. And there's a place that has been refurbished and renovated at the International Airport in case we have a case that we feel fits into the definition, the case definition of uh, Ebola, would be able to handle them at an isolation place that we've uh, uh, identified at uh, the International Airport. In country that is within uh, the district of Lusaka, we've identified another place where if any possible case were to be identified in the community, we'll be able to actually, I think, handle it from there. And mind you, what we've encouraged all institutions to do is to actually have isolation facilities in their institution. Because some of these cases you may end up finding them in you know, the hospitals, you, know, you find them at Levy or in our clinics. The 2014 outbreak is the largest outbreak in history and the first in West Africa. The disease has killed over 2,400 people. This is one of the biosafety level 3 laboratories in the country. Samples for the Ebola virus will be tested here. But does the country have the capacity to detect the Ebola virus? We already established some specific method to detect the antibody from animal and humans. So now it is available. And third, we have a capacity to uh, culture the cells. It is required for the virus isolation. That's why we are already prepared. And in addition to that, that you know that Ebola virus is very dangerous pathogens. To handle these viruses, we need a special containment facilities. It is called biosafety level three. Now, in the world, there are the four grades of the biosafety level laboratory. The fourth is the most highest containment capacity. And we have a three facilities. It, it, that room is maintained in the negative pressure every time. It means the air inside of the laboratory never go out from inside. Well, we are fortunate in that um, uh, we have two uh, facilities in the country, uh, one uh, that are known as uh, biosafety level three laboratories. These are the type of laboratories that are equipped to handle such kind of dangerous uh, pathogens. Uh, the laboratory at the University of Zambia School of Veterinary Medicine uh, is one such laboratory. It was uh, set up with the assistance of the Japanese government. And uh, there, they have, in fact, for many years, been carrying out research into these viruses. They have been uh, carrying out surveillance in wild animals to see whether there is any risk or any danger for us in, in Zambia. So because of this, they are ready to be able to, to diagnose these viruses, they have the equipment, they have the re reagents, they have the trained personnel. So this is where, uh, uh, this would be our first line of uh, laboratory support uh, in the event of a case of Ebola. We also have a, a facility at the University Teaching Hospital, which is a biosafety level three uh, laboratory, which was uh, originally designed for uh, research on tuberculosis, but uh, there is a potential for this uh, facility also to be modified into uh, one in which we can do this type of Ebola diagnosis. So if we should need, if we should exceed the capacity even of the uh, veterinary laboratory, we have this uh, fallback measure. Uh, and of course, um, uh, our colleagues in South Africa have got a highly specialized uh, laboratory uh, which is designed to handle uh, these viruses at a higher level even, they are biosafety level four. So if need should arise, they are willing, they have offered to receive specimens from all SADC countries and they can back us up. In an event that Ebola is detected, 
What steps will be taken? In the event that we detect Ebola, there is a very comprehensive plan. Should Ebola be found in a particular district, uh, resources will be mobilized to go to that district, first to contain the illness, which means you are trying to, to stop it from spreading. And in, a, uh, in the near future, you will actually uh, get uh, a publication of uh, the fuller sort of um, uh, the, the fuller process uh, so, so that everyone can know what we do at what point. So as I was saying, the first thing is that if Ebola enters any shore in Zambia, we contain it there. And with regard to that, DMMU is in the process of building isolation facilities in the, the districts that have been, um, uh, that were mapped as most high risk, where we're most likely to get uh, cases. So that if cases come, then we, co we, we contain it there. The ministry recognizes that uh, it's important for us to train healthcare workers, especially since Ebola is a disease that we have not really experienced in Zambia before. So we have developed a training package of um, what we would uh, want the healthcare workers to be trained in. We've also identified uh, teams of trainers, and these are teams that comprise of a variety of health workers, including clinicians, uh, lab staff, environmental health staff, health promotion. Uh, we have those uh, teams have been identified. In addition to that, we have um, developed a, a curriculum. So we have a curriculum which has the content of what we would want um, to be taught. We've also set dates, and this training will start on the 29th of September. We will train uh, the provinces, and following that, the provinces will in turn train the districts. District staff will train uh, the health facility staff, and then there will also be trainings for um, community health workers, and uh, hopefully that should um, uh, ensure that every health worker knows uh, what to do in the event of an outbreak. Dr. Joseph Kasonde is the Minister of Health and now gives an overview of Zambia's preparedness in an event that Ebola is detected. We have three aspects of preparedness. The first aspect is the population, the people. Have they heard about it? Are they concerned? What do they think they would do in the event that one of them became ill? So we have a number of our staff going around trying to brief the community about what this thing is, what are the implications, and it is really pleasing that it is being taken on very seriously. And as I have mentioned elsewhere, my visit to Kaputa only recently proves that. The second part is the health system. Now the health system should normally be always prepared for any emergency of any kind. And in this case we are talking of a public health emergency, uh, a disease outbreak. We have experience of outbreaks of cholera, of uh, HIV, we have this experience, so it, we are not really starting from scratch. We are starting from an organized system of surveillance. Surveillance meaning watching out all the time what is coming up. Finally, we have the aspect of technology. And uh, that we are pleased in this case that we have received uh, support from uh, 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 all weather friends from China who have donated uh, the first two uh, fixed uh, scanners. But of course we have some non-fixed scanners already and we plan to purchase more. Comesa Market is one of the biggest in Lusaka. Though many here do not know much about Ebola, they are afraid. 
Ebola, I don't know. It's a disease that we have heard that is killing people from West Africa. Yeah, since we don't know it here, and we don't know, we don't know the, the symptom of this disease. Well, we can really say that if we. People are sensitizing people of how this disease can be affected to infect the people. I'm sure that's when we can know it better. I think the government should educate us more because here we have got so many foreigners. So I will urge the Minister of Health to even to print some books so that people can know more about Ebola. The local World Health Organization office is also fully involved in ensuring that Ebola does not get into Zambia. WHO, the different levels of the organization, is mainly providing Zambia with technical support in the following areas. First, policy guidance. We supported the country to develop a contingency plan for the health sector, but also to prepare a national budget and a communication strategy to cope with Ebola virus disease. The second component of our support is related to training. So we train a core team of trainers to roll out training of health workers to all the provinces. The training was conducted in Brazzaville in uh, August this year, and uh, we expect those trained to cascade the training in the country. It is a very severe condition. With the outbreak of Ebola in neighboring Democratic Republic of Congo, authorities are not taking any chances. Every government department is being sensitized. That is not all. High-profile meetings are also being held every week to review the level of the country's preparedness. What treatment approach has the country adopted in an event that there is an outbreak? Basically what we do, we look at someone who has fever and any three other symptoms that we have mentioned. Then on top of that, we try as much as possible to look if there is a link to a place that has a Ebola. So this person should have either traveled from a place that has a Ebola or come into contact with someone that is from a place that has a Ebola. Minus that would end up seeing every other patient in Zambia. How does one differentiate the symptoms of Ebola from other diseases which may have similar symptoms? I think that is the difficulty with uh, Ebola and uh, uh, oftentimes that's why it ends up, ends up catching us off guard and a, a large outbreak occurs because the symptoms are very similar to other diseases that we might have and uh, it takes a while before people realize that this is something different. The symptoms are what is known as um, flu-like symptoms in the early stages. People will have headache, they will have weakness, they will have red eyes, uh, they will have chills and fevers, and those are symptoms that are very similar to, to malaria, to flu, to many other, other disease syndromes. Ebola has been in Africa for close to 40 years. Is there any vaccine or cure? Currently there is no vaccine and there is no approved cure for uh, Ebola virus uh, disease. There are experimental medicines, uh, experimental vaccines that are being worked on, and uh, we are very hopeful that uh, something will come out of these uh, soon. 
The Zambia Medical Association is equally involved in the preparations, but its interest is in health workers. The, one of the major interests for us is to make sure that our members have received adequate equipment and are adequately protected. Remember that this disease kills a lot of health workers and that's what worries the Zambia Medical Association. The second thing that worries the Zambia Medical Association is the fact that this disease is deadly and kills a lot of patients. So um, at every level we are really, really interested in how the country has prepared itself for this disease. Up to this point, we would say that the preparedness is satisfactory. We are happy with what has been put in place so far, but should the disease break out, um, we do have uh, enough expertise to be able to deal with it, except that we need to bring everybody up to speed. Now, when you talk about treating a disease, we are not just focusing at doctors. We have to train nurses, we have to train porters, we have to train mortuary attendants. We also have to make sure that the lab is also trained in how to handle the samples. The Zambia Civil Society Health Partnership has also added its voice. I think there is need also for, 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 for us as a country to intensify research. I think I would like to urge the government to actually I, uh, identify more stakeholders to make sure that we work together. And uh, you know, when a problem like this comes, it's not a one man show, it's a collective responsibility. So as a civil society, I think uh, we are very much prepared and we are supporting government's effort. So far, Zambia has not detected an Ebola case. The virus actually crosses over from wildlife. So let us ensure that we are very careful with the way we handle wildlife. If you find a bat, don't play with a bat. If you find a monkey, don't just feed, start feeding the monkey. Because we know that there is a possibility that these actually might uh, you know, transmit the virus to the human being. We need to strengthen and to sustain what has been achieved. And uh, we need also to test our preparedness plan uh, through simulation exercises. There is also a need to enhance the United Nations country team, support to the government but also to the community in implementing the recommendations of the Emergency Committee of the International Health Regulation as well as the Ebola response roadmap, particularly by supporting the implementation of a national Ebola response plan. We have in place all that is needed, all that it takes. And therefore, to activate all those is a step which we can take easily because of the basics that we have. I would like the, the Zambian people to feel they are safe and hopefully they may never have to actually see a case. Being prepared for Ebola is one thing and fighting the disease when it sets in is another. Keeping it out at all costs is the best option. Well, thank you so much for joining us. That's all we had for you on today's edition of News in Depth. We were looking at Zambia's preparedness in an event that Ebola breaks out. You can join us again next week at the very same time with another interesting edition of News in Depth. I've been your presenter, Penifa Skainda. On behalf of my producer, Efim Pandates, goodbye and God bless you.